Now live on 10 Tampa Bay. Trouble in the tropics. Local cities wasting no time to get ready for the coming storm. The biggest hurdle right now as it inches closer to Florida. Fighting off the flu. What experts want parents to do right now to avoid an extra trip to the doctor ahead of flu season. Where's the love? Florida's signature love bugs are slowly disappearing. Why scientists think you'll see even less of them this season. Keeping you informed, prepared, and connected, you're watching 10 Tampa Bay. And good morning, you're watching 10 Tampa Bay this morning. As you wake up, all eyes are on the tropics. I'm Jamison Euler. I'm Caitlin Lockerbie. This is a live updated look at what is potential tropical cyclone nine. And right now it's in the northwestern Caribbean Sea. And we have you covered this morning, keeping you informed with the most up to date track and forecast, keeping you prepared by helping you stay storm ready. Yeah, we are also keeping you connected with both the states and local plans right now for this storm. This morning, all things looking clear outside in Tampa live look for you. Today is the time to prepare. Yeah, let's get a check of that early morning out the door forecast with meteorologist Amanda Pappas and we just got the latest advisory just seconds ago. Brand new advisory just coming in from the National Hurricane Center. The five o'clock advisory really not showing any major change. We still do anticipate the system to get a name and become a tropical storm later on today. So the system right now battling some wind shear, but I'm here to tell you that everything's going to be fine. Take a deep breath today. It's actually beautiful beautiful outside. Look at this. The next 12 hours we see hour by hour we work our way back up to the 90s with only a 20% chance of rain. Meanwhile, all eyes on the Caribbean because we see that this could be a hurricane by Wednesday and then with the latest update, it went from being a 2 back to that potential major uh, major hurricane category strength. So, we do anticipate that we will have a major hurricane making landfall somewhere along the coast of Florida, the Big Bend region heading into late Thursday. So heads up, today is the day you want to get those preps done. I'll be breaking down exactly all the impacts and what you need to know heading into the next 24 and 48 hours, when and where, all coming up. All right, thanks, Amanda. Getting you prepared today, Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency for 41 counties in our state, including seven in our area. Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, Pinellas, Hillsboro, Manatee, and Sarasota. Yeah, the governor tweeted, now is the time to prepare since we may start feeling the effects of the storm by tomorrow. 10 Tampa Bay's Jenny Dean joins us live in downtown Tampa. And Jenny, when we really get to it, today is really the last day to finalize all of our emergency plans and, and to really to get ready. Absolutely. Good morning, Jameson and Caitlin. You know, the emergency declaration allows the state to carry out any necessary logistical rescue or uh, evacuation operations and then send in help faster after the storm. So in his tweet, as you mentioned, the governor said everyone should have their emergency plan, know their evacuation zone and be pre as prepared as possible for this storm and that includes making sure your hurricane kit is good to go. If you don't have one, you need to go ahead and get one together now because this is an emergency hurricane kit. There's going to be you need to have seven days of food and water for each person in your family, a first aid kit, flashlights and batteries, medications, cash. Just think of anything that you might need in case we lose electricity or water service and make sure you have a plan if you do have to evacuate. It is expected to intensify relatively quickly um, and that's normal for this time of year. It's also normal for storms to develop around this area this time of year and with having such warm waters across the Gulf, that's going to help with the intensification. Now, right now, there are no evacuation orders, but that can change quickly. So you need to be prepared for where you'd go, what you'd need to take with you if you do need to go. And of course, we're going to be getting a ton of information today from local leaders, from the counties and the cities, letting us know their plans and what they're going to do from the schools, possibly closures and possibly shelters opening. All of this information is going to be on our 10 Tampa Bay app, and we're going to be updating it all day long. All you need to do when you go to that app is click on Hurricane Headquarters. So if you have it with you, you'll be able to check periodically throughout the day as we get those updates and of course uh, updates on the storm's 
track as well and how it will affect us here in Tampa Bay. So it's best to stay prepared. Live in Tampa, Jenny Dean, 10 Tampa Bay. All right, thanks, Jenny. Keeping that in mind, and as you heard her say, right now you want to know your evacuation zone or your storm surge zone ahead of this storm. This morning, head over to 10tampabay.com. We have tools right there, all the resources you need to learn what zone you're in and when or if you need to leave if evacuations are called. We also have a list of sandbag sites on our website now from Citrus County down to Venice and Northport as you prepare today. Now the record rainfall we've seen over the past six weeks has added some extra wrinkles to preps this time around. Yeah, today the city of St. Petersburg drainage cleaning operation is in the western part of the city. After taking care of the eastern side on Monday, the city has already started to drain a few inches from Lake Megory in South St. Pete. Stormwater drains into the lake, which then dumps into the bay from Salt Creek. And with the ground already saturated, it might not take much for flooding. Since Lake Megory is so large, it's just a few inches gets us a lot of capacity. The more rain you get, the more runoff you get, and the more debris you get. So we, we come into that situation a lot where we have continuous rains. Stormwater management is also out on the streets with sweepers and rapid response teams clearing drains and removing debris. We're also tracking potential impacts to local schools. We're just hours away right now from Pinellas County Schools making a decision by 11 today on canceling school. Right now, Hernando County will close schools and district offices for Wednesday as well as Thursday before and aftercare programs will also be canceled on those days. This comes as they prepare to serve as storm shelters. All other districts across the Tampa Bay area right now are still operating as normal until further notice. Yeah, we'll of course keep you posted on that. As you wake up this morning, there's a state of emergency in Hillsborough County. Commissioners just issuing the order Monday night ahead of this storm. The order will last through September 30th. It gives county departments the power to take safety actions during the storm. It's also a way for Hillsborough to get federal aid for cleanup. Later this afternoon, both Hernando and Pasco counties will share updates about their plans for potential tropical cyclone nine, including the possibility of issuing its own state of emergency. Hernando County will share its update at one o'clock. Pasco County commissioners, they're holding an emergency meeting at three o'clock this afternoon inside the West Pasco Government Center. We'll update you on any action taken there as well on 10 Bay.com. Well, heads up for those in Sarasota County. Government offices are closed today as government leaders prepare for this storm. Storm. Trash pickup will run as normal as well as all breeze bus and trolley routes. And this morning, all maintenance work is finished on the Lake Manatee Dam just ahead of the storm. Crews say that work was routine and not connected to the major flooding from last month. At this hour, the county says the water level is just below its target level. The county says they will keep an eye on it and could potentially reduce levels even further if needed. But they say either way, neighbors should take precautions to protect themselves against any possible flooding. And remember, you can stay informed, prepared and connected throughout this storm with the 10 Tampa Bay Plus streaming app. It's free. We have the latest storm tracks, the impact the forecast and you can download it again for free on Roku, Fire TV or Apple TV. All right, let's get right to traffic anchor Sarah Rosario joining us now. Smooth start to this morning right now. And as we keep saying, today's the day to plan and prepare. So if you got to get out on the roadways, the earlier the better. Yeah, exactly. Right now we're looking at I-75. This is an area where we have some overnight road work. And obviously as the storm nears our area, crews are going to not be out working on the road. So they're trying to get everything they can done get done now so they can continue as we continue out the rest of this week and the storm gets closer. All right, here's a look at this area. You can see no big delays here along I-75. 75 for drivers through Hillsborough County. Another place we'll be focusing on is our bridges. This is a look at the Howard Franklin Bridge. Speaking of construction, they're wrapping up some road work here through this area right now. And we know that once water starts lapping over the Howard Franklin Bridge, that's when Florida Highway Patrol they, and state troopers, they work to close the bridges and to make sure everybody can get over the bridges safely. If you can't do so, they're going to be starting to close those bridges. No current crashes to tell you about right now as we kick off our Tuesday morning. And then looking at here along the road along I four speeds moving at 22 miles per hour as you're headed westbound. This is an area you may see some stop and go traffic as some a repaving project is underway here. All right, thank you, Sarah. As you wake up this morning, a Sarasota man is sitting behind bars in Manatee County after killing a man over the weekend. Sarasota police say 42 year old Jeremy Shannon shot and killed a 56 year old man on Sunday afternoon right near the intersection off of MLK Way and North Osprey Avenue. U.S. Marshals arrested him at home in Ellington on Monday. 
Looking ahead and happening tomorrow, a judge is set to hear arguments over the proposed abortion amendment. Right now, the group Floridians Protecting Freedom is asking a judge to stop the state from spreading, quote, misinformation about this ballot measure. The group says the state broke the law by using public funds to campaign on a political issue. It would protect abortion rights across the state to Roe versus Wade standards. The ballot measure needs 60% of the vote here in Florida to pass. Happening in just hours, Tampa Bay getting more health care options. The Tampa Housing Authority is hosting a grand opening for Bell Pharmacy. It's an inclusive health option for the LGBTQ plus community. The new pharmacy is at Encore Tampa. The grand opening is happening at noon on Ray Charles Boulevard. Several city leaders plan to be there, including Mayor Jane Castor. Well, say hello to this cutie at Bush Gardens. What we know about the newest member of the crash. And this morning, all eyes are on the tropics ahead of potential tropical cyclone nine. The models just updated minutes ago. Amanda has the updated forecast next. The 10 Tampa Bay 